Hi there, welcome everyone to another episode of Wi-Fi. Today we are going to be talking about the Fibonacci series and extending our diagram that we were building on the doubling series in our previous episode. If you haven't seen that video, I recommend watching it so you can have a better understanding of what we're talking about. I'd like to just quickly review the doubling series diagram that we built on our last video where we took our doubling series 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5 and placed it around in a circle and then we balanced all the numbers around the number 9 and found the hidden 3's and 6's and then in this diagram I've also separated out the two doubling triangles on each side you can see here 1, 4, 7, 2, 8, 5 and those are kind of like the primary alternating energy forms around the doubling series. So what we're going to try and do in today's episode is fit the Fibonacci series within this diagram also. And using the same rules that we did before with the doubling series, we have our numbers going around the circle, all balancing on the number 9, so that they all oppose each other, adding up to number 9. So the first thing we want to do is write out the Fibonacci sequence as it is normally. And so what I've done here is created a quick list of numbers with the Fibonacci series in the middle. The Fibonacci series is a series of numbers that starts with one and then basically adds the previous term to itself, giving you the next term. So here in this example we have one and then one and when you add one and one together you get two. And then when you add two and one together you get three and 3 plus 2 equals 5 for the next term, and 5 plus 3 equals 8 for the next term, and 8 plus 5 equals 13 for the next term, and so on. It's a pretty common series and most people should be familiar with this. But if we keep going, finding the Fibonacci numbers, you eventually notice that they grow into really large digits. But to find our sequence, we don't need to go to that many terms. As a matter of fact, we only need 24 steps of the Fibonacci sequence in order to find our root series. When you convert the Fibonacci series into a root series, it comes up with an interesting pattern. This pattern is shown here on the right column, and the numbers are 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 4, 3, 7, 1, 8, 9. And if we continue this to the 24th index, we get 8, 8, 7, 6, 4, 1, 5, 6, 2, 8, 1, 9. And it appears that every 12th index is a 9. It also appears that the numbers in index 1 to 11 and 13 to 23 are all opposites of each other. So if you look at index 1 and 13 and 2 and 14, they're basically opposite numbers of the same series. And what I mean by opposites is that these numbers add up to the number 9. It also appears that after the 24th index, our pattern just repeats itself. So that the Fibonacci series actually has 24 root index before repeating itself. Unlike our doubling series, we only have 6. 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5, 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5. Here the pattern is a little more complex, but that's to be expected. So if we take the first 12 root digits of our Fibonacci series, and we take the next 12 digits of our Fibonacci series, and we put the first 12 on top of the second 12, and do some quick addition, you'll see that they all add up to the number 9. This is our first key in developing our diagram with a Fibonacci series in it. It basically tells us that these numbers need to be opposing each other on our diagram. So if we have 1 on one side of our diagram, we'll definitely need to have an 8 on the opposite side of our diagram. It's almost like a rule that 1 and 8 need to be paired together, 2 and 7 need to be paired together, and same with 3 and 6 and 5 and 4 and so on. These numbers need to be with each other. Okay, so I first began by arranging these numbers in this figure 8 pattern here. Where I had the 9 in the middle, and then I took the numbers 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 4, 3, 7, 1, 8, and placed them around a circle like this on the top. And then I did the opposing numbers on the bottom, 8, 8, 7, 6, 4, 1, 5, 6, 2, 8, 1, and arranged them like so. And so it kind of worked for me because we had the 3's on the top and the 6's on the bottom kind of giving this opposition. And even though the numbers do oppose each other and still give us 9's, it's not quite what I was looking for. So 
I was trying to separate their polarities based on the threes and the sixes because they're alternating so I'm just assuming that their polarities are opposing and I was trying to separate these two. But in fact, they fit better on the diagram like so. And so now we got something that looks closer to our doubling series diagram but with more numbers. And so you might be asking yourself, how is this going to fit in with our doubling series? It's actually very interesting. So if you notice, I still have the 9 in the middle, and we start with the 9 in the west direction. And I place the 9 over here uh, for reasons that I'll get into in another video in the future, but I placed it like so to kind of be in synchronicity with other things in our world. Uh, such as the rising and setting of the sun, and so on and so on. But, for now we'll just discuss the Fibonacci series with the doubling series together. So in the west we begin with the number 9, and then it kind of goes over towards the east direction, clockwise, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 4, 3, 7, 1, 8, 9, and then carries on around back to 9 again. And you notice that all these numbers oppose each other and balance on the number 9 again, like the doubling series did. Whenever you see a 1, we have an 8 directly across from it, and so on. So you'll notice here that we have the 3's on top, and we have the 6's on the bottom. So we still have this separation of opposites, which is kind of what we want. And so now to try and fit this into our doubling series, I did a lot of experimentation, but I found out that the doubling series is actually present here. And if you notice the first set of numbers here, starting with the 9, and then going 1, 1, 2, and then we have a 3. And then we have a 5, 8, a 4, and then a 3. And a 7, 1, an 8, and then a 9. So we know that 3, 6s, and 9s are kind of special, they're kind of important. They're almost like the scaffolding or the skeleton between the structure. So if we use these as our walls to separate out these numbers, and we do a little bit of root math on these three numbers in between each of these walls, we notice something interesting. So 1 and 1 and 2. So we add these three numbers together, 1 plus 1 plus 2 gives us 4. And 5 plus 8 plus 4 gives us 8. When we do the root math on it, of course. 5 plus 4 is 9, 9 plus 8 is 17, 1 plus 7 is 8. And 7 plus 1 is 8, and 8 plus 8 is 16, and 6 plus 1 is 7. So our next number is 7. So here we have 4, 8, 7. So what is it showing us? Well, what it's showing us is that in between each of the 3s, the 6s, and the 9s is actually our doubling series broken down into finer detail with the Fibonacci series. It's actually quite amazing. Down at the bottom of our diagram we have the 1, and then the 2, 4, 8, 7, 5 going around. And they're all balancing around the number 9. This is really quite amazing, actually. So it's showing you polarity, and it's showing you movement, and it's showing you structure and growth. So another thing you might have noticed, if you haven't noticed already, is that in between the doubling series is actually another doubling series. 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5, but they're going in the opposite direction, and they're circled around the 3, 6s, and 9s. If you notice here, 1 plus 1 equals 2, 2 plus 9 equals 11, so 1 plus 1 equals 2. And then for our 1, if you notice where the 3 is, 2 plus 5 equals 7, 7 plus 3 equals 10, 1 plus 0 equals 1. So here's proof that we have another doubling series moving in the opposite direction, centered on the 3 6s and 9s. Another thing that's interesting is that we have a doubling series within the Fibonacci sequence. And this pattern is moving in a counterclockwise direction starting with the first one in our series. And it goes backwards, skipping three numbers, and then finding a two, and then you skip another three numbers, and you'll find the four, and then you skip another three numbers, and you find the eight, moving in reverse here. One, two, four, eight, seven, five. And just on the other side of the nine, counterclockwise to the nine, you'll see a one. And moving clockwise from there, skipping three digits, you'll get another two, and then skip another three digits, you'll get a four, and then skip another three digits, you'll get an eight. And here we have a doubling series traveling in the clockwise direction. So within the Fibonacci series itself, we have two doubling series moving in opposite directions of each other. And then on a grander scale, we have two doubling series moving in opposite directions of each other. So what is this telling us? 
And if you look here, the threes, the sixes, and the nines form our star tetrahedron again, or the star of David, whatever you want to call it. And so here is the complete diagram of the doubling root series and the Fibonacci root series together. Quite amazing, actually. So we'll be elaborating on this diagram a little more in the future, and I'll be talking about what I think it means in nature and how we can possibly use it. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and I hope you learned something about the Fibonacci root series and how it plays its role in our doubling series diagram. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, tell your friends. They could learn something cool about numbers that maybe they didn't know before. And in our next video, I'll be talking about circles mainly in the Vesica Pisces. It's just going to be a quick little bonus video that kind of is sort of unrelated but related. Not sure, but it's got some interesting information there that you might not know also. So stay tuned for that one. Check it out. It'll be coming out in the next few days. Until next time, keep asking yourself, Wi-Fi.